broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Woodstock, Georgia, it's time for Cherokee Business Radio. Now, here's your host. Welcome to another exciting and informative edition of Cherokee Business Radio. Stone Payton here with you this morning. And today's episode is brought to you in part by Woodstock Neighbors Magazine, bringing neighbors and business together. For more information, go to Facebook and Instagram at woodstockneighbors.bvm. And if you have a heart for community and you want to grow your small business, consider joining our movement, the Main Street Warriors. Go check us out at mainstreetwarriors.org. You guys are in for a real treat this morning. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast with Networking in Action, Miss Sarah Branch. How are you? I'm great, Stone. How about you? I am doing so well and really been looking forward to this conversation. I I, I got a thousand questions. I know we're not going to get to them all, but I think maybe a, a great place to start would be if you could articulate for me and our listeners, mission, purpose, what are you and your team really out there trying to do for folks? Sure. Well, Network in Action is a business lead referral group. And I'm sure people are familiar with business referral groups. They're all over the place. However, our founder decided he wanted to do something different. Isn't that what every entrepreneur wants to do? (laughs) Let's do something different. But, of course, I believe this time he came up with something really, really good. And what we've done is taken the typical activities that you would do in a business referral network where passing referrals, getting information from people, finding out about people's um, elevator pitches that we talk about. We have put that all on a technology platform. So it speeds up the process and makes it very simple for people to get connected to each other and to pass referrals to each other. Now, we do have meetings, but the purpose of the meetings are more for training, mentoring, coaching our members to be, guess what, better connectors. So that they go to a meeting that is, let's say, a a Chamber of Commerce meeting or any business association meeting, they can be better at connecting with the people that are in that meeting that will benefit them and their business. So we just approach business referral networking a little bit differently. Well, it sure sounds like you do. And it sounds like fun, rewarding work. But I got to know the backstory. How in the world did you find yourself in in this role? (laughs) Oh, that's great. No, um, it's all my husband's fault. (laughs) Isn't that always the case? Always. It's always the (laughs) spouse. Always spouse's fault. Um, I was anticipating leaving the corporate world. I was so ready to get out of corporate work. I've been in corporate work for 25 plus years. And what I had done most of the time was training and development. Uh, My most recent job that I left, I was a director of training and development for a small software company. And my husband has had his own business. He is an action coach franchisee. He's had that for over 20 years. Well, And they have a great reputation. I've, I've heard of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, they have wonderful reputation worldwide. They're yeah. the, the world's largest business coaching organization. Hmm. And the the founder owner of Action Coach is constantly, constantly training people, uh, bringing new information to the organization. It's, a, it's an excellent organization. And my husband is always looking for networking opportunities. And he's also a vet. So he was approached by a Network in Action franchisee uh, in the city of Atlanta to join a veterans group. And he'd never heard of Network in Action, didn't know what it was like. And he said he would go just because it was a veterans group. After he'd been there about six months, he came home and he said, Sarah, I have found exactly what you need to be doing when you leave the corporate world. And so I attended several meetings of that group, and I agreed with them. So we bought the franchise, uh, worked it kind of part-time for about a year until I was fully prepared to leave my job, leave my work. So in March of this year, March of 2023, I uh, walked out the door from my corporate job, woke up the next morning, and I was a full-time self-employed entrepreneur. So it's been great. I've loved it. And it was exactly the right thing to pick. So it was, um, it, it too is a franchise. So Network in Action is headquartered in Houston. 
Hmm. Um, started by a man who was very frustrated by lack of networking opportunities. And he took a couple of years, designed our platform, and here we are. So now that you've been at it a while, what are you enjoying the most? What's the most rewarding part of the role for you? Well, I've always been a people person and I've always been a connector. Uh, I didn't figure that out until I was, oh gosh, I guess in my thirties, but my first job, several jobs out of college were sales jobs. And I knew that not everybody was going to want my product or service, but I always paid attention to what my customers were talking about in their business. And I remember one time a customer saying to me or a potential customer saying to me, Sarah, you know, I really don't have a need for your product right now, but do you know anybody who does X? And I said, sure, I know that Joe down the street, he, he can help you out. And I did that several times and I started realizing that I was a natural connector, that I just wanted mm-hmm. to help people. So my motivation of connecting people and helping people is now manifested in this group where I bring people together and teach them how to be really top-notch, first-class connectors to where they're not only helping their own businesses, but they're helping businesses all around them. So So what should the outcome be from our networking efforts? How do you know if it's really working? Because it's not always like just immediate revenue. I went to the thing and I talked to the guy and he wrote a check and we're doing – that's not necessarily the outcome that we – should be seeking every time, right? You're absolutely right. When you go to a networking meeting, you should never have the goal of selling something at a networking meeting. A networking meeting is designed to start and continue and nurture relationships. So it, people get turned off if you go to a networking meeting and let's say there's somebody relatively new and they're they're working the room trying to sell stuff. <laughs> and that's that's really not the goal. So... You go to a a networking meeting, and your goal is to get to know as many people as possible. But what I teach is, first of all, you've got to identify your target audience. And then within that target audience, define your ideal customer profile. Now, after that, it's to find out where they hang out. So you should pick the networking meetings where your ideal customer is most likely to hang out. Then we work on what questions you ask that potential ideal customer and what kind of conversation you're going to have. And the the folks in our group, we teach them that they should have a very condensed version of their elevator speech, about two sentences, that may have something a little provocative in it to see if the person they're talking to goes, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more. That's the whole point. And then once they get to the point of someone is interested, then we talk about questions. But the absolute goal of going to any networking meeting stone is to leave with a minimum of two one-to-one meetings booked. Whether you go to coffee, whether you go to lunch, drink after work, but you leave with a minimum of two one-to-one meetings meetings. And that's where you get to know people better. That's where they get to understand you and what you're trying to accomplish in your business. And then you become one step further into that trusted resource. So people like to buy from people they know, like, and trust. Well, it's it's relatively easy to do the know and like part. It always takes time for the trust part. So <laughs> that's why you need to meet with people regularly and especially one-to-one they find out who you really are yeah and 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 you find out who they are and you find you you discover how to genuinely serve them even if it's not going to be your products and services at this point right i mean there's so much uh power i i've discovered particularly since moving here to to woodstock and becoming part of the local community uh how productive but also just how fun it is to be the guy that knows the guy (laughs) <laughs> right? And to be able to, you used the word earlier, c- connector. All right. Right. The the guy that knows the guy, we call the referral source. Uh, and they are the most pow- powerful person in a referral relationship. Well, think about right. it. You know, Stone, if you came up to me and said, ah, oh, Sarah, I've got a problem. I'm trying to find this service that goes with my computer and I can't find it anywhere. I'm so frustrated. Sarah, do you know anybody who has that? And there's great likelihood I might know somebody. And then I would say, well, you know, Stone, I think Joe Jones over at XYZ Software Company has exactly what you need. And then I connect the two of you. 
But for Joe Jones and for Stone Payton, I have become the referral source, which is really the most valuable part of that relationship because you should nurture me as Joe Jones should nurture me because I could probably give you more referrals. Yeah. So that's the guy that knows the guy. And that it's a, it's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing when you have, uh, and I, I like the fact that you get a little joy from being the guy that knows the <laughs> I, guy. I really do. Yeah. But what you're describing to me seems like the antithesis, 180 degrees apart from uh, my, my uh, preconceived notion of what I would, would characterize as, as traditional networking, which at least my conceived notion of it, I have no taste for at all. I just don't like that. Hey, ho, what do you do? What do I do? Here's my business card. <laughs> I just, I really re- retreat from that. And, and I will share with you here in this local community. Um, I, I have found that not to be the case, particularly like at young professionals of Woodstock. It's yes. very much more about building the relationship, getting to, to, to know people, but talk more about the, the work. If someone becomes, participates in this networking and, and action, it, it sounds like it's uh, pretty heavily laden with, with uh, education. It sounds like you're going to make a lot of immediate, genuine connections if you, if you join this thing. But uh, let's just play it out a little bit. And I mean, we can use me as an example or somebody, but what, you know, what happens from day one when we say, yeah, I want to be part of this thing? Sure. So if you say you want to be part of my group, obviously you come to a meeting. Uh, but before you come to the meeting, we'd sit down and talk about all the benefits of being in my group. Uh, there's all sorts of things, the people that you meet, the skills that we teach. But really the bottom line is that makes us completely different from any other group is we have a guaranteed return on investment. So, Stone, if you join my group, hmm. uh, you and I sign a contract that says you will come to 11 out of 12 monthly meetings and that you will pass a referral in the group once a month. Pretty simple. Well, then I have a job to do because I am the professional manager of the group. Most business referral groups require everybody to have some volunteer position. There are some business networking groups that are entirely run by volunteers. In our concept, in Network in Action, it's run by paid professionals. Well, I am that paid professional, and the membership fees that you pay to the group go to pay me so that I will always be there, always be working for you and everybody else in the group. So I go out to as many networking meetings as my little mind can stand in a week, (laughs) and I talk about our concept and talk about the benefits to it. So you stone in my group would be the only person with your profession. So there's one seat per profession, Mm -hmm. which makes it great because then it's really good to pass leads back and forth to each other at our monthly meetings. Um, we would do some training session. Like I just mentioned a few minutes ago, what a real referral is. We constantly reinforce that we have people talk about it. Um, usually once a month we have a member spotlight. So if it was your turn, Stone, you'd stand up and give a presentation on a little bit about you, your background, but about your business so that we know exactly what it is that you do and understand your ideal referral. Mm -hmm. And we do all sorts of different exercises on talking to people. We even practice standing up and do public speaking. So those are the kinds of things that that we do. Um, But we also expect our members to have their own one-to-one meetings in the month in between our meetings and then introduce the members to other people in their network. So we're hoping that that ripple effect of my network gets to meet your network gets to meet Susie's network is is that wonderful little relationship expansion that we're doing within our network. Well, and that's a very important distinction that's beginning to come to light for me now. This is not do this instead of go to the chamber meeting and the Woodstock meeting and the young professionals. This is do this so that when you go to those meetings, you are very well prepared and you're going to maximize your impact and you're going to just do be that much better at networking that's the, you're not saying don't go do that stuff in fact you go do that stuff you, right absolutely yeah and that's a big difference there's some business referral groups that are closed like ours which means we have one profession per seat mm-hmm. but then there's some that are also exclusive and what that means is 
they want every referral that you pass ever in your lifetime to be confined to that group. Mm. They don't want you to be a member of another group. They don't want you to go out and do anything else other than keep keep all the, the goodies inside your group. And, and we disagree with that. Mm. We think that my network and your network um, combine to form uh, something even better than just the network in our uh, in our referral group. And as I said a minute ago, it's a nice ripple effect. You just keep going to meetings, keep meeting people, expanding people. Heck, I could go to the to the Woodstock Business Club where I met you and say, oh, my gosh, Stone, you need to meet somebody that I met last week that was not in the Woodstock Business Club. And how wonderful is that? <laughs> I get to <laughs> spread the joy that way. Absolutely. So for you, I, more so maybe than anyone I've interviewed recently – you really have to eat your own cooking, like everything you're telling your clients to do, right? You're you're out there practicing these disciplines. You are a a, um, a a living example, or you certainly try to live into that. I'm sure of what you're doing. So I'm curious, how does the whole sales and marketing thing work for you? Because you're running this business, and so people sign up. There's a revenue model to it. Uh, I mean, do you you pretty much do what that's how you run your business that's that's the sales and marketing for your business is what you're teaching these other people yes exactly yeah. i am out demonstrating those skills every day in every networking group so if somebody has any question about how we handle business referrals they see me doing it they hear me talking to people they understand that that i'm the the live demonstration <laughs> uh, of how the group ought to behave and the things that we should do outside of our group and connecting with other people. Yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So when you're out there doing it and doing it right, I'm sure you're watching, observing a lot of it and some of it, uh, we won't call it wrong. We'll call it less than optimal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suspect you see some patterns over and over. What are some common mistakes or some things that, you know, you know, gang, if you're listening to this, next time you go to one of these things, you know, start doing this and stop doing that. <laughs> Are there a couple that, that you, you just see over and over? And, and you, maybe you don't actually let your eyes roll, but your eyes are rolling mentally. Yeah? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Um, one of the things that I see that happens all too frequently is the same people are talking to each other every week over and over again. My challenge to everybody, mm. and especially in my group, is when you go to a networking meeting, go find somebody you've not talked to. And even if they're not new, just go talk to them. And if you find that this is an interesting person, then, hey, let's go ahead and book a one-to-one -one and have some fun outside of the networking meeting. So it's um, it, it, the biggest thing is go find somebody you don't know, somebody you haven't met. And then the next thing is make sure you introduce them to somebody else. So go find somebody you don't know and then take them to someone that you know and say, hey, I've met somebody new. May I introduce you to whomever the, the new person is? And, of course, the larger the group is, the more likely there's going to be clicks where people who've been going to the same group over and over again, yeah. their comfort level is with those same people. And that's um that's a challenge for a lot of people, but for uh, an extrovert like me, it's not a problem. <laughs> I, just, I will go up to people and say, you know, I overheard a little bit of what you were saying, and it sounded really interesting. Can I join the conversation? And I'm always let in the conversation, but that's my favorite line. Yeah. So. Well, and you mentioned something earlier too, when you're uh, initially meeting someone or maybe someone has has had the presence of mind to do something similar to what you're describing and introduced you to someone and they go well tell me more about your work stone which you know and they're like oh cool i'm gonna get to talk about my work the the the, the tendency i'm sure in some cases is to tell them it all <laughs> you're like give them the you know the whole thing but I, I think you suggested maybe earlier in the conversation just give them kind of the highlight and then have that deeper conversation Later in a one-to-one, a -one, yes? You're exactly right. When you get introduced to somebody for the first time, you should have your little two two or three sentence maximum 
statement about what you do that has something a little provocative in it or or maybe an idea that the person might not have thought about, whichever suits you, yeah. and then you don't say anything else, especially until the person says, that's interesting, tell me more. And, and you're right, people have a tendency to just dump everything they know and it's as they're reaching for their business card right exactly (laughs) or if i'm talking with them and maybe part of it is maybe i'm telling them too much i I, mean i've had this experience and i guess it's part of what you know kind of made me say look i don't even want to be involved in that kind of is literally they are looking over my shoulder like for the next person to talk, like they're not genuinely engaged. It's like they're in a business card collection contest. Exactly. You've seen that, right? Oh, there are a lot of people who think a networking event is just an opportunity to not only collect business cards, but hand out business cards. Right. Um, I was talking to one of my uh, fellow franchisees a couple of weeks ago, and she said, you know, when I first got started in this business, I thought that what I would do is just go to these networking sessions and hand out my cards. And then I'd go back to my office and wait for the phone to ring. <laughs> and she said, I quickly found out that that's not how it works. And so if you don't have a plan when you go to a meeting, as I said earlier, leave with two one-to-ones booked on your calendar. I mean, get out your phone, look at the person in the face and say, mm-hmm. let's get together next week. And get a, a calendar booking right there. And thankfully enough, the calendar on my phone is linked up with the calendar that's on my computer. So if oh, I nice. make a date on my phone calendar, it shows up on my computer, which is great. Um, and so get those booked immediately right there on the spot. I, I have two tomorrow that I'm going to meet people for coffee tomorrow, mm-hmm. day before Thanksgiving. So, um, yeah, I've gotten them get them booked as much as possible. Well, if you're up for it, I'd love to get a little insight into how to conduct a productive one, one-on-one, one-to-one, whatever you call that. Uh, that would be, and, and listen, gang, if, if, if you just, if you want to learn a lot from people who are very experienced and are experts in their domain, get you a radio show. You get them in here, you talk about what they do, and then you get all this free consulting. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to take a swing at this for the uh, on on the on the one to one thing, are there also some outcomes you should try to expect from that, or some do's and don'ts, or a couple of disciplines you should exercise? In my case, it's probably going to be at my field office behind Reformation. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, it, I got I got to confess, um, I I think maybe I wing it way too much mm-hmm. in the in in the one to one. Yeah, Any as most people do. Most okay. people wing it. So it starts with the invitation to the one to one. And the invitation of the one-to-one should go like this. Stone, I want to find out what you're working on, and I want to see how I can help you. I had a one-to-one last week with a young man that I met at another networking uh, event, and I said, wow, I'm really interested in what you're doing. Can we have a one-to-one so I can see what you're working on and see how I can help you? And he said, yes, of course. And he came to the meeting prepared with his company information. As it turns out, the the skill that he has was a skill that my husband was looking for for his, uh, for his customers, for his clients. Mm-hmm. So I, I just sat there and listened to him talk and asked him questions about what he was doing. So that, as I said, it goes back to the invitation to the one-to-one. Say, I really want to find out what you're working on and see how I can help you. Then when you get to the one-to-one, you say, tell me what you're working on. Let me see if I can help you. So they're reminded that that's the real goal of the meeting. And if they're worth their salt, once they're through talking, they'll turn around and ask you the same thing. Right. But the goal is to find out what they're working on and see how you can help them. That's the main thing. And then (laughs) once you get to the one-to-one and they start talking about their business, hopefully – Questions about their business will pop into their into your head. I generally follow a question model that's from my old sales training days where I ask them about what's going on in their business. Do they have any challenges? Tell me what the challenges are that, that you find in your business. What's the impact on your business? Is there something that is really um, significant or maybe just annoying? Let, let's go to the things that are annoying first. Those are simple. <laughs> And then the very last question I would ask them is, what's going to be the benefit to you to fix this? 
tell me what the the dollar value is and the benefit is for getting this particular issue fixed. And it really makes people think. So it's a it's an invitation to talk about what's going on in their world. Mm-hmm. And then it's a series of questions to help refine what it is that they're working on so that you can see if you can actually help them or refer them to somebody who can help them. Right. What so a marvelous a- structure. And, and I, I think I'm discovering through this conversation or rediscovering, it hasn't been the first time I've tried to learn this lesson. I uh, I need to do less winging, I think, for me and, and more – add more structure to it, something that's repeatable and, and even transferable for other people on my team or in my in my Business Radio X world, right? Yeah, and, and these skills that I'm talking about can be used in any situation. It doesn't yeah. just have to be a business networking situation. It, it Go to a party. You know, we got Christmas parties coming up this time of year. Right, right. And you go to a party that may be a business party but is part social, you can – Modify your questions ever so slightly, but find out what's going on in somebody else's world. Find out if there's something that they're really frustrated about that they're trying to fix or change or make different and see if you can help them out. Yeah. So in that one-to-one, let's say that they are worth their salt and they do want to reciprocate and they are genuinely interested in what I'm working on and what I might might need, What? Uh, how much should you try to share with them? Do you, do you, do you then kind of lay it all out or do you, you need some plan around that. The reason I'm asking is uh, in my business, there's a version of what we do that is very prolific that people don't help a lot of people with and make a lot of money with. And that's the traditional model for podcasting or digital radio. Mm. 96% of podcasts fail and they don't help people make money. And there's some reasons for that. And, and we've kind of cracked the code on that. Um, but, um, I, now that it's, let's say that, w- that we have this one to one and it's my turn to describe what we do and why it's so different than what m- most people would say is podcasting. Uh, are there some, Rules, discipline, structure for now it's my turn to tell them. Absolutely. Okay. So we, of course, never do an information dump. But you just provided a little structure right there for something that you may say to someone who asks you, oh, tell me what's going on in your world. You may be able to say, well, we do podcasts and radio shows. Did you know that 96% of all podcasts fail? And I bet the other person will say, no. I didn't know that. And then you can do a brief explanation of why podcasts fail. And then you can give a little information on how they can succeed. Don't, don't over overload them with information, but those two, those two things that, that little provocative question of, did you know that 96% of all podcasts fail? And that opens their mind up to say, Oh gosh, no, I didn't. Then you just give a little bit of piece about how they can succeed and then that person may ask you another question, but that's it. It's sort of like pose a question, answer the question, pose a question, answer the question. And that, that does two things. One, it makes sure that the person who's listening is actually listening to you. Cause if you ask them a question, <laughs> they'll have to stop and the, Oh yeah, I hadn't thought about it like that or, or some answer like that. Right. Right. But that's what I try to do is try to pose a question and then give a little bit of an answer to see if the person is, gets what I'm talking about. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad I asked. Yes. <laughs> I'm, well, good. I'm feeling really good about my upcoming one-to-ones. And, uh, and I resemble many of your remarks. <laughs> uh, going back to what you described about um, having a tendency to just kind of visit with the same people, I could tell you the minute you said that, uh, because I, Young Professionals of Woodstock is a group that I really enjoy. I walk across, or when it's not too cold, I hop in the, in the Business Radio X golf cart and go over to, and I got to tell you, I do sort of gravitate to the court. I talk to my buddy Austin because we both like to hunt and fish and all that. And, uh, I talk, so I got to get out of that. I got to, I got to go meet new people. And the other thing that I, I, I think I'm extroverted enough to do and should probably make a conscious effort to do is connect, go find that person and connect them to someone that I do know and get them. That is, uh, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a discipline. It is. It truly is a discipline. So if you, if you talk to yourself in your head as you're in the golf cart going to the, (laughs) to the, the young professionals meeting, say to yourself, okay, I'm going to start by going to somebody I don't know, and I'm going to ask them, 
hey, what's going on? What's happening in your world? Tell me what you're working on. And listen to them talk about their business. And then immediately while they're talking, of course, don't lose track of what they're saying. Think of the other people in the group on the other side of your brain. Who can I connect them to? Who can I connect them to? Mm -hmm. And listen and then plan the connection. And then once you've done that, go connect the two and then go back and repeat it. Find somebody you don't know. Find out what they're working on. Figure out who you can connect them to that's in that in the room. Now, if you think there's somebody really cool you could connect them to who's not in the room, then obviously you do that um, in a different fashion. Maybe you could do a one-to-one, uh, talk to them about it, see if they're okay. Uh, for example, I've got a, a young man who is interested in my group, but he's not quite sure the benefit of my group. So I'm going to do a demonstration for him by hmm. connecting him to somebody who's not in my group. Ah. Uh-huh. And then he'll see the value of having me as the leader because everybody else in the room is learning the same skills and practicing those skills along with me. And then he'll see that, ah, okay, I'm not going to be expected to just give referrals inside the group, that the whole point is to understand what he's trying to accomplish. And he, he's got three businesses, and he just started a new one that is completely different from anything else he's done before. So <laughs> it's going to be fun connecting him to help him get started. So. All right. So you, so you have this group, and you still have openings mm-hmm. from certain professions or certain types of businesses. Is I that do. correct? Mm-hmm. And then as this thing can – like what's next? Well, as this continues to grow – and you get that group established, will you maybe start another one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the way that it works with our franchise is when you when you buy a license, a franchise license, you get the rights to build three groups. Oh, wow. So I'm working on one group right now, and that group just happens to be in Roswell. And when I do my second group, it's going to be uh, – North Cobb County, Southern Cherokee County. So that's a big reason why I'm talking to you because this is where my yeah. second group is going to be. So Fantastic. All right. What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you, have a more substantive conversation, maybe have that one-to-one or uh, whatever you feel like is appropriate website, LinkedIn, email. But I just want to make sure that folks can begin to tap into your work and, and, and get to know you. Sure. Well, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm at I am Sarah Branch on Instagram. My phone number is 470-707-3598. And my email is my first name, last name, Sarah, without an H, Branch. So that's Sarah Branch at networkinaction.com. So come find me. Well, Sarah, it has been an absolute delight having you in the studio this morning. Keep up the good work. What you're doing is is so important and having such a genuine impact. And uh, we sure appreciate you. Well, thank you, Stone. That's wonderful. My pleasure. All right. Until next time, this is Stone Payton for our guest today, Sarah Branch with Networking in Action, and everyone here at the Business Radio X family saying we'll see you again on Cherokee Business Radio.